Доброго ранку, ми з України. Morning, we are from Ukraine. Buenos dias, somos de Ukraine. Да, да, да. We are starting to broadcast in English and Spanish so that the whole world knows about the crimes of the Russian Federation. We start our today's release with the Roskomnadze solution. This organization controls the media in the Russian Federation and today this organization has banned the broadcasting of interviews of President Zelensky to several Russian journalists in Russia. The formal reason for the ban is anti-Russian sentiment in the world and incitement of hatred towards the Russian people for unknown reasons. Roskomnadze and 74% of Russians are surprised and see no reason to hate. I am also surprised, you need to have very strong doubts about the Russian repressive apparatus in order to be afraid of just one toothless interview. Сомневаться во всем своем репрессивном аппарате, во всей своей пропаганде, если Россия боится одного достаточно беззубого интервью. However, I know why they are afraid of interviews. This story is about dead Russian soldiers. I think they don't want to show the corpses. I don't quite understand how they. There is a transfer procedure, we don't want to keep them, you understand that very well. We want them to be taken away, but the Russians at first refused, then offered us sacks. Look, that's all, I don't even know, we all had episodes in our lives when people left, maybe not relatives. Look, even when a dog or cat dies, people don't do that. They were trash bags. And I don't understand what these people think, and what the parents of these children think. If I were them, I would set it on fire. I'll be honest, if our official brought it like this, in a sack, or didn't want to take it, people would stuff his face. I'm telling you as the president of a country that is at war with Russian soldiers. We hate them for what they have done. But listen, it's not cattle. It's scary, because if Russians have such an attitude towards their own, then what kind of attitude do they have towards everyone else? Почему это страшно? А я вам скажу, потому что страшно, а страшно потому что, когда отношение такое к своим, то какое же отношение ко всем другим? Yesterday, an absolutely shocking video appeared on social networks, in which puppies finish eating a Russian soldier. This shouldn't happen, but Russia refuses to take its dead. Instead, a video is being circulated in Russia that allegedly shows Ukrainian soldiers beating and shooting captured Russian soldiers in the legs. The Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that this is a fake. I'm not so categorical, let's try to figure it out. Давайте обсудим всю эту историю. Потому что вы по Харькову Because you were beating Kharkov, bastards. What kind of officer are you? What nationality are you? Azerbaijani, there are documents. The order has arrived. Let's pay attention to what language is spoken in this video. That's right, in Russian. At the same time, the Russian narrative convinces us that only Ukrainian Nazis are fighting against the Russian army. They hate the Russian language and speak only Ukrainian, and in between murders of Russians they must sick. We don't see anything like that, and we don't hear the Ukrainian language. We hear the Russian dialect inherent in the east of Ukraine and the west of Russia. Of course, Russians should be interrogated in Russian, because Russians do not know other languages. 
But I don't even hear a hint of a Ukrainian accent. This is the usual Russian language spoken in Russia. Yes, I know that now a huge number of Russian TV viewers, stung by propaganda, are shouting, no, we know for sure that you speak Russian in Ukraine. Yes, there are indeed Russian-speaking people in Ukraine. But it's your propaganda that tells you that there are only nationalists here who oppress the Russian language. And what a Russian in Lvov they can hang you and beat you in Kiev. It's a real cognitive dissonance. Look up the meaning of this term in the dictionary. So it turns out that this video is fake, because everyone there speaks Russian, and this is completely impossible for the Nazis who are at war with the Russians. И здесь получается абсолютный когнитивный диссонанс. Посмотрите в словаре, что это означает. Так вот, получается, что либо это все фейк, потому что там все говорят на русском языке, а это абсолютно невозможно для националистов и бандеровцев. Either it is the Ukrainian Nazis who speak pure Russian, which they should hate. Ask yourself, how is it that Russian-speaking Ukrainians in Ukraine are trusted with machine guns and heavy weapons? My friends, right now your reality is failing. Turn on the TV and throw in a new portion of propaganda, because you will begin to break down. War is dirt, war is death, war is charred corpses, war is body fragments, war is guts and feces. This video may or may not be fake. But at the same time, I do not see any torture in this video. I don't see people being hit on the head with a rifle butt. After Marupol, after hundreds of murdered children, getting hit on the head with a gun but from the person you just tried to kill. Yes, in this video we see how the legs are shot. Some might say it's torture. I see a raid here. Imagine a small mobile unit in two or three vehicles, you went into battle and captured prisoners. What will you do with these prisoners if there is no place for them in the transport? And if you go on foot, they will catch up with you and destroy you. Let them go so that in 15 minutes they find a weapon and try to kill you? Or maybe it was necessary to put them against the wall and put a bullet in the back of the head. Well, then it really would be a crime, because prisoners cannot be shot. What solution do we see? We see that people are shot in the leg so that they become unfit for combat, so that they leave Ukraine wounded. Мы видим, что людям простреливают ноги для того, чтобы они стали небоеспособными, для того, чтобы они стали трехсотыми. Yes, this is a controversial decision, and if the video is not fake, in the future war crimes will be investigated by the officials of the tribunal in The Hague. There will be an investigation of the crimes of Russia and there will be an investigation of the crimes of Ukraine, if they were. In addition to feats and crimes, there is a place in the war for stories about the soldier Schweik. For example, in the 4th Tank Army of Russia, they began to remove old equipment from conservation because something happened to the new one and it is not yet clear what. It is not clear to the citizens of Russia, because we understand what is the fate of Russian tanks in Ukraine. So, out of 10 reactivated tanks, only one turned out to be ready for commissioning. The rest were dismantled and, according to some evidence, some tanks were even left without engines. They disappeared somewhere. And here I agree with the Russian journalist Alexander Nevzorov, who immediately stated that this information was fake. Because where could even one serviceable tank come from? There are many stupid generals, colonels and majors in Russia. But I have never seen stupid ensigns in Russia, so a working tank from a long-term storage warehouse is nonsense. And now we turn to international news. The Turkish authorities have said that the world should not burn bridges with Russia. We do not want either, Russia should simply become a different country. 
For example, to be reduced to the borders of the Golden Ring, from Sergiev Posa to Suzdal and Vladimir. After deputinization and war in these cities, beautiful hearted people with full beards and torn off legs will preach orthodoxy, play the Carmoni, cook Spiton, and weave the most durable, most famous, and unparalleled Russian bass shoes. I do not rule out that they will have to return to serfdom, but I am sure that in order to save the nation, one does not need to pay attention to critics. The chipmunk people have been ready for this for a long time. The famous Russian writer Lev Tolstoy was a slave owner, but this did not stop him from writing the famous War and Peace. This huge novel is half written in French and it seems that, unlike most Russians, Emmanuel Macron has read this part. And it seems that this encounter with the famous Russian culture hurt Emmanuel Macron badly. I do not want to offend the French people, who now stand shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainian people, but Macron is very mistaken in that he is still trying to believe Putin. Look at Mariupol, the city is 90% destroyed, there are tens of thousands of victims Teams, including hundreds, if not thousands of children. Tens of thousands more are dying right now under the rubble from thirst, lack of food and medicine. Yes, the French president is trying to unblock humanitarian corridors, but he will be deceived. We have seen this many times and there is no need to be misled about Vladimir Putin. He is pure evil, and if we do not stop him together now in Ukraine, the war will come to your homes. I am a motoring journalist and have been to France many times, I have been to Paris dozens of times. I have been to Corsica, the Côte d'Asia and Marseilles, and I really do not want French cities to repeat the fate of Ukrainian Mariupol, Ukrainian Kharkov or Ukrainian Nikolaev. But back to Tolstoy. We must give him credit, he was not a supporter of slavery. But when Tolstoy tried to free his peasants, they gave up their freedom. So Putin, it seems, believes that slaves do not need freedom. The main thing is that the barn should burst with sugar, because for Russia this is the same as ambrosia for the Olympic gods or poetic honey for the Scandinavians. Sugar. Why store it? Sugar will not save us, because we have fun times ahead of us. In a country. I won't talk about this topic for a long time, I can talk for a very long time. There is no future in a country where the closure of McDonald's is a tragedy, and the loss of freedom means nothing. That's all I can say. And now I want to address to those who shit in the comments. What it looks like, they flew in, yelled, shit and flew away, while they do not discuss what they saw, they just shout, this is propaganda. Or, it's fake. Dear friends, I get half of the information from open Russian sources. I provide you with videos, images and news links. For example, on websites in Krasnoyarsk they write, I read, tomatoes now cost 350 rubles, bad cucumbers at 150, potatoes cost 66 rubles, carrots are sold for 156. The most ordinary beets cost 105. This is not an import, it is all grown in Russia and the residents are perplexed, why such prices, because these products are not bought abroad for dollars? And really, why? I know that not only trolls are watching me in Russia, so I will ask you to confirm or refute this information. Is it true that food prices are skyrocketing in Russia right now? I'm just wondering how true these reports are. 
I repeat once again that I take information from open Russian sources. For example, Mr. Peskov, Putin's press secretary, quite openly stated that there are no oligarchs in Russia, but simple honest businessmen robbed by sanctions. Like travelers in the Wild West, they were just riding in a stagecoach with the money they earned, when suddenly they were robbed at gunpoint. Oligarchs, you say. I believe that the last oligarch, according to Mr. Peskov, was Mikhail Hodakovsky, imprisoned 20 years ago. Here, of course, new questions arise, but it is clear why beets, tomatoes, and cucumbers are becoming more expensive. First, the vast majority of Russia's very wealthy businessmen are friends and classmates of Vladimir Putin. Coincidence, of course. But the fact is that these friends of his are not travelers in the Wild West, they are more like robbers with revolvers. Secondly, these honest good businessmen have never paid taxes on their yachts, or on their pitchforks, or on their planes. Russia is some kind of wrong empire. Its ruler and friends plunder the empire and hide it all in other countries, and then complain that their yachts were arrested after they attacked a sovereign state. And at this very moment, prices for cabbage begin to rise. Another coincidence. Khodorkovsky was imprisoned because of his political ambitions and likely desire to become president. Since then, only KGB officers can apply for the post of president of Russia. Perhaps this provision should be added to the Russian constitution, so that it would be more convenient for Mr. Peskov to answer questions from foreign journalists. And now the news for my subscribers who watched test drives of cars on my channel. What were the times, weren't they? Well, there is one so-called Russian blogger colleague who is a big fan of President Putin. His name is Alan Eneliev. He has many followers on Instagram and YouTube. Before the war, Alan was a Russian propaganda combat unit. Where is Alan now? I will answer you, the family dumped in the European Union, and Alan is now in the United States of America and even asked for political asylum there. I repeat once again, Alan Eneliev was part of a criminal system, massively bombarding the brains of Russians with selective lies, but suddenly he turned into a dissident and a victim of the regime. It would be interesting to look at the documents that Alan submitted to the Americans. What did he write there? That he is a refugee from Marupol or Nikolaev, or maybe from Moscow. At the same time, the Russian chipmunk people, in between the search for cheap vegetables, can enjoy fresh test drives of American cars performed by Alan. Why not New Lada? It is to be expected that soon Alan will appear on his channel in a t-shirt glorifying his new homeland, if, of course, he receives the coveted political asylum. Meanwhile, the chipmunk people will look at America through his eyes. And now our favorite section, SBU Radio Interception. In the new recording, the participants raise existential questions, as well as discuss the taste of stolen absinthe and beer. Please note that every time you hear a high tone, people on the recording use obscene language. Here it is, the real language of Tolstoy and Chekhov. Толстого и Чехова. И два абсента на нем. Have you ever drunk absinthe? It turns out to be 70% ABV. I didn't know you couldn't drink it neat. We also went to the store. We robbed the store, got beer. Молодой человек, а вы где, я извиняюсь, на курорте? Да блин, у меня он еще пиво. Да мы вчера ездили за Беха, короче, там мы ограбили магазин, короче, там пиво с набрали. В, в бета 
у местных еду. There are no locals here. The locals are somewhere in Poland. Well, their grandparents, two or three people. The houses were bombed when he was born. There was the Second World War. He was small, and now he is 70 years old, and this shit again in old age. Chilling out. Now we will drink beer. Their beer is delicious. All alcohol is good. We are here like in a resort. We are not going on the attack. We are guarding the road. I will not book the date of the wedding yet. When I arrive we will decide. At the end of our story, means about bio-laboratories. It's means, because it's impossible to treat it differently. Probably, many viewers now want to ask, wait a minute, but where are the fresh means about Lukashenko? We have them too. If six hours before the operation there had not been a preventive strike on positions, four positions, I will show the map. They would have attacked our troops in Belarus and Russia, I will show where the attack was being prepared from. And if a preventive strike had not been delivered six hours before the operation, we did not unleash this war, our conscience is clear. It's good that we started. That's all. Russia will be destroyed, victory will be ours. Glory to Ukraine.